So this one, you will see, this is actually the qualitative research design. I will show you the syllabus right now. And it was actually taken from Christie's presentation, although I included one or two slides there. Uh, qualitative research, and actually we talked about this one a lot in the class. We talked about all these things like qualitative research, quantitative research and all other things. But here, what I'm actually trying to show you that is, uh, practically speaking, if you see this one, this is a condition of use, this particular slide I have taken from Chris Shree. And obviously, uh, you know that one, uh, well, you have to pay due homage for that one. But here you see, this is our syllabus. The syllabus is, this is block five, the qualitative research design. We do have the case studies. We do have ethnography. We do have participant observation and non-participant observation. I already made one video of this one and uploaded that one in our in my in my YouTube channel. And the last one you see the focus group, grounded theory method, action research, narrative logic. These four things are there that we are rather going to cover in this particular uh, deliberation. Uh, as you know that one, Zoom is only allowing 40 minutes for fish uh, meeting or like that. So it's not giving too much of time. So I think most probably we will be getting uh, 40 minutes for our discussion. So within 40 minutes, we have to complete this one. And after that, if you have any question, then most probably tomorrow I'll be in the university. So tomorrow we, we can do that one. So after that or day after tomorrow i can go for this one now see we are starting with this one the ethnography itself now you see this ethnography practically speaking this very term came from anthropology itself where we're actually challenging or you can we are investigating different types of uh, challenges specifically ethnography means there is a human the different aspects of human activities or human research. So taking two or three matrices, parameters, and you see, they, this is what, what you are actually doing, see, interaction with the target audience in their real life environment. And you know, real life environment means in ethnography, what you are actually doing, uh, the sample is in front of you, and you do not know what are the different parameters that you are going to measure as because you are observing that particular sample and at the same time you are either checking the different attributes of the sample and you are recording it attribute of the sample means it is not some kind of structured way you are actually doing this one ethnography is rather uh, minutely observing one individual one target audience and whatever is his behavior regarding the study you are actually doing, that is considered as the ethnographic research. So next slide will clear you this one. Now see. See, ethnographic research, first thing is this is a qualitative method. So it is not a quantitative one, it's a qualitative method where the researchers observe or interact with the studies, participants in their real life environment. So I already told you, you know that one observation. We have two types of observation, that is a participation, participatory, non-participatory, or rather you see overt and covert observation. So here we see we are actually getting that one. The researcher observes and interact with the study of the participants real life. See, ethnography was popularized by anthropology, but right now it is used across wide discipline of social sciences. Now, within the field of usability, if you say, this is what the main problem, that is, ethnography is used for a designer's deeper understanding of the design problem. Now, what are these? These are, See, relevant domain, audience, process, goals, context of usage. Now you see, what are the things? Relevant domain, then audiences, processes, goals, contexts. 
So in ethnography, if you see, you have five different aspects. That is one is the domain, second one is the audience, third one is the processes, fourth one is the goal, and fifth one is the context of use. That is why you, are, you will be doing this ethnographical study. The first thing is the relevant domain. Relevant domain means what you are rather going to study for a particular group. As for example, for our life perspective, think of this one. That is a qualitative analysis like you say, um, that is present activities or rather contemporary activities of the librarians during this corona crisis. So if we actually go for such kind of study, so first is that the relevant domain, that is what, where we are rather going to justify studying one particular situation when everyone is in trouble and the information givers or information disseminators, they are doing something on a specific domain, that is what, that is a particular health issues which was never there in the art and which is rather all time uh, uh, challengeable. That's the domain. Now audiences, you see whom you are going to observe. Processes by which you will uh, complete this one. The goals, what you will receive after that one. What you will receive after the design completes and the context of use by you are actually. Now see, the aim of ethnographic study, this is what, this is the usability. Under the scheme, the design problem, all associated issues. So in, ethno, in ethnography, main problem is that, and the design is the problem because you have to observe people in real time. That is what important is, this is real life, real time. So its design is a very problematic one and designer, if they can penetrate their real life and they can observe their real life, then only they will be able to truly understand the problem and design a better solution. That is ethnography is nothing but a study of human, human element. हम लोग ह्यूमन एलिमेंट जो है उनको स्टडी करेंगे कब कैसे स्टडी करेंगे दैट इज फॉर रियल लाइफ एनवायरनमेंट ऑल्दो इट वाज इन एंथ्रोपोलॉजी बट राइट नाउ इट इज बीइंग यूज्ड इन सोशल साइंसेस नाउ इट इज हैविंग फाइव कंपोनेंट्स दैट इज द डोमेन ऑडियंस प्रोसेसेस गोल्स एंड कॉन्टेक्स्ट फाइव कंपोनेंट्स नाउ व्हाट इज द डोमेन द डोमेन इटसेल्फ इज एक्चुअली द स्टडी रिसर्च यू आर डूइंग द रिसर्च on what is the con content of the research. Domain means kis ke upar hum log research kar rahe. Kaun sa issue ka upar hum log research kar rahe. Domain. Then audience, whenever we are going to, whenever we are going to do this research and who are our samples. And third thing, the processes. What are the different activities we are doing for getting the information and what is our goal and what is the context of use. And that is why in ethnographic research is actually you have to be in the field for extracting the data. So next one is the narratology. This is what the study of story structure, a kind of story structure, a rather this is, you see, rather a pretentious level refer to a structuralistic study of narrative. Now, the structuralist seeks to understand how recurrent elements, themes, and patterns yield a set of universals that determine makeup of a story. Go through it again. Narratology is the, the study of story structure. This is rather pretentious level refers to structural structuralist study of narrative. The structuralist seeks to understand how recurrent elements, themes, and patterns yield a set of universals that determine the makeup of a story. That is what. 
Now here you see in qualitative research, in qualitative research, we are trying to uh, demystify the data because we do not know what the data is. Here what we are actually not going with the theory itself. Here we are not going with a preconceived idea itself. We are going to the field and we are checking the data. Once we are getting the data, theory is rather developed within the field. And the data is rather developed in the theory itself. So obviously there is one kind of chance that is you can develop your own narrative by your own understanding by using the different elements, themes, patterns and you can make up a story. But this is not actually the true thing for developing the qualitative research or rather a qualitative pattern of research. So narratology is rather framing of a structure. So it is rather a structured way of the sequences. What do you do? What do you do? What this is actually the concept of knowledge, but I will actually come to the come to that one later. Next thing. Now you already studied this one. See research design, entire process of question to data collection, then study data. Study design specifies the data collection and other thing. And the next is now see. Qualitative research design. How you can start with qualitative research design. It is something different than that of quantitative design. Now, first thing that is a research question that you know. Research existing literature, develop ideas of what is the based on theory, collect data, analyze data, report findings. So this is actually a framework or you can say that one. This is a framework for any kind of thing. But for quality research also, it is actually not very different. Now, the core point, important. The quality research is inductive, not deductive. Qualitative research is inductive, not deductive. Now, what does it mean? Qualitative research is inductive, not deductive. This means you are not deducting something from the ready premises or ready things. Whenever you are getting the data, you are just joining the data one after another and you are trying to make a whole story kind of umbrella like thing, umbrella like thing, and that is known as the qualitative research. Qualitative research means now see the quality is inductive, not deduct. How you can say that one? See the example of uh, a good rice. If you want to develop a very good, you have a very good paddy field, or rather, if you want to develop very, very good type of rice. The first thing you have to know that whether you have the right soil or not, the right soil for that, whether you have the right seed or not whether you have the right irrigation or not. Ultimately, whenever you are accumulating one after another, you are joining one after another, you are actually getting that one. This is the induction. And ultimately, you are getting that one. That is the whole thing. That is what the result is. If all these things are this much of optimal, then the rice will yield like that which will have a better value in the market than that of others. This is what the quality represent. Here, the data let, not the theory let. Data enters, let, data enters, but not no theory. That is not the theory. Previous concepts, previous theory is not there. You are trying to induct data. Sorry, data one after another and you are actually bridging the tie, you are making a tie. Theories are formulated in the field, not only in the library. And the aim is not to reduce complex system into observable variable, but to take complexity of the context into account. Very important. What is important? 
the aim is not to reduce complex systems into observable variables, but a complexity of context to account. What is the meaning of it? Now see, black hole. I'm talking about black hole. Now black hole is a complex system. Now whenever you are studying black hole, you can derive, you can break it into different observable variables. That is whether that variables, if you observe the swan, you can, whether you are actually, you can lead to or you can reach to that particular uh, concept like black hole or not. But here it is not the thing. We are taking complexity of the context into account. We are going for that one. Is black hole really exist? The conflict. If it is there, how? What is black hole? Why the why the light cannot pass through the black hole? So that is the complexity of the context. So it is actually this is actually it's not like that. Something is there and you are breaking that one up. It's something which is not there. And you are trying to make that one, check it whether it can be viable, feasible or not. That is what the quality. So, who are not getting this one? Where is the problem in this slide? Anyone? Okay, so everyone got this one, fine. So yeah, we'll be moving to the next one. Now you see, see it. in qualitative, quantitative research, qualitative research, or sorry, in quantitative research, questions must maintain wording in order to be comparable. Asking you, asking, do you trust your government versus do you have confidence in your government? You are not getting anything? Vijay? Yes. Getting something? Words? Yes. Yes, sir. Okay. Now you see, in quantitative research, what we are actually saying, so in quantitative research, the answers we try, the answers we want to see in a comparable way. Comparable means countable way. Countable in what sense? That is, we want a definite answer. That is, do you trust your government? Yes or no. Do you have confidence in your government? Yes or no. How many chairs are there for? So this is what quantitative research. But in case of qualitative research, what we usually do, we partially suspend a priori theoretical knowledge. That is, you have to do this one. You have to start with scratch. Don't think that one something ever existed. You have to start with. That is, in order to open a new pattern or conceptual themes which emerge, like that one you see, I'm telling you in qualitative research, what you can do this one, or rather how you can mm. exemplify this thing. Mm -hmm. Dr. Ranganathan developed five laws of life science. Now, whenever we talk about life science, whenever we, anyone is talking about life science, we are saying that what well, the foundation of life science is, or rather is developed with these five laws. The concept is no one is even thinking that one whether these five laws are enough or not, or if there can be a sixth law. Okay. So obviously, right now till date, no one was able to identify that one. But this doesn't mean that a priori theoretical knowledge, library laws will be defined and five. As Ranganathan said that one, there will be five and only five fundamental categories. There will be five and only five fundamental categories. So this is not, this is known as a priori. A priori means the pre-hand pre theoretical law, pre-existing theoretical law. In case of qualitative research, you have to 
to discard this idea you have to you have to go away with that one you have to dump it somewhere and you have to start with the data itself whatever the data you are getting now with that data you are trying to understand something new conceptual idea is coming on coming up that is what right now let me tell you something that is what it were is right now being done regarding corona why uh, corona antiviral drug to so development corona antiviral drug development what people are actually doing they are rather using some bit of a theoretical knowledge what is that this theoretical knowledge is how they combated with sars virus how they combated with other influenza virus and they are taking that one and they are those vaccines and now they are trying to manipulate the dna and rna of corona and trying to manipulate that one and trying to develop something new by well, new antidotes or rather new antiviral so but here you see trouble is that the social demand is so high social demand is so high so all the developers all the chemists all the uh, researchers all the bio engineering fellows biogenetic fellows all these people they are rather in a pressure to develop the medicine rather than antidote as early as possible as early as possible so here we do not have the chance of getting the new patterns or conceptual things but if we can do that one that is if we think that the corona itself novel corona virus not the corona itself the novel corona virus itself is something new and it doesn't have any relationship with any other then you can go for some bit of qualitative research to avoid theoretical tunnel vision theoretical tunnel vision is very much theory is there you always have actually a look or you always have an attitude to look something through that tunnel through that theory in qualitative research you can never do that one that is you have to go to the field and you have to Derive that and extract the data, and from that data, by combining that data, you have to develop. So, now, what we are actually talking about, say, methods for discovering new conceptual relation. First one is the grounded theory. I already told you that one grounded. Theory. I think most probably you heard this very term, grounded theory. So now, what is grounded theory? You see, this one was actually rather antique one. It's not very new. It's nineteen sixty-seven. So Glasser and Strauss, the first, and this one, and later Kathy Charmach, P H A R M W Z, Kathy Charmach. She developed this one more. So what is that? Grounded, grounded theory. What? So don't rather do not bother about grounded. What you can do? That is, you better go to the field and collect data, collect data, and then different data. As a different, different data, different data, and then why? What you did? You collected the data and then you started coding the data. Second aspect is coding. Who is actually hammering his microphone, his or her microphone? I'm getting here some kind of um, big thumbs or rather. Okay, so right now I'm getting that. So just mute your microphone. If you want to mute your microphone, rather I am listening others. And some babies are also shouting. I do not know who are they, but some I am I am hearing actually the voices of some babies also. Okay, now I think you will get that one. 
Now, what I am trying to say that is, you better go to the field, collect the data. Now, how to collect the data? So, whatever you are getting, you are writing that. As for example, you see, uh, if you want to study on the uh, information consumption behavior of the agriculturalists, of the farmers, of the agriculturists in Jalpaiguri district, if you want to go for that one, if you want to survey this thing. So you'll see this one, what will happen? The information satisfaction, consumption, satisfaction of information consumption. So now obviously, whenever you will actually go there and you will collect the code, each and every agriculturalist or rather the farmers or rather the person who is engaged with agriculture, they will give you the different type of data, different type of data. And it depends on the type of query you are posing. With that query, they will be giving you the data. Now you collected the data from number one fellow, from two, three, four, five, six, like that. You completed your sample. Now, second thing is that you have to codify it. Code. Code means what? That is grouping. Out of 50 fellows who told the same thing or who, are, who amongst them told the same thing and you were codifying that one, who stated that? And third thing is rather making some memos. Memos means narratives. That is what the narratology from narratology that is actually memos memos means in what context they told that one in what context each and everyone is suppose out of 50 sample 29 talked about the same thing as for example suppose pesticide they talked about so your code is pesticide and your data is what they said about pesticide that is 29 fellows now you are writing the memos for each and every one what they stated regarding pesticide that is first one what is stated second one what is stated third one what is stated so now you got several phrases strings ideas these are known as memos memos along with the codes along with the respondents actually data now you have to analyze these memos and codes to check that one whether the different codes and memos they are having any relationship or not that is what interdependency so suppose the pesticide and irrigation might have some bit of relationship so now you have to <coughs> tag this one so by this way ultimately you will actually see that one the untold story will be told to you by the data itself. You haven't to take the help of any other <coughs> specific kind of theory or like that. So this process of data collection is controlled by the emerging theory, the high ground theory. <coughs> Next one. Now you see, uh, in this framework, this grounded theory framework, the sampling may focus on specific groups or specific individuals, as I said. <coughs> Not intended to be representative as qualitative quantitative research, you are gathering data on those individuals because you think that there is something to be found and a theory to be developed. What does it mean? They are not representatives like quality quantitative research. Right. What is that? In quantitative research, you are asking how many chairs are there in your library? You will get some result. How many tables are there in your library? Either someone will say zero or someone will say your number. But here, if you say whether the pesticides you use, does it give you the good result? Now they will be in trouble. 
whether they are actually giving good result or not they can see that one yes this is giving good result but if i can procure that one that might give more better result that is what the problem is you are not getting the information like quantitative way quantitative nature you are getting the information because you think that if i ask them something new i can get something special i can get and that's for why you are actually evaluating them and criteria for sampling must be based on some kind of explanations and theoretical conservation now i'm skipping this one skipping this one skipping this one now now see this one is a structure or design this has design ask question this ask question means what research question research background literature if you have any if you do not have then you cannot do select subject collect data interpret data do conceptual work collect more data refine research question write up results and findings now the circular nature of qualitative data means that data collection will be extended over a period of time data collection can be extended this whenever you collected the data and you identified that on analyze something you were seeing that one it is not giving you a real footprint to say something then again you have to go to the field and you have to collect the data and that is why the new concept that can be identified and filled filled out that question can be refined now see i am telling you one thing that it's a kind of uh, reminder to you i think we are rather running short of time uh, we have only 4.38 minutes left in this session so after that this particular session will be automatically actually quitted and then again you better log in i will log you i will log on again and then you better log in again with the same id and password no problem same id and password so that we can extend more so but as because this meeting was scheduled that's why this particular meeting was actually uh, allotted 40 minutes for discussion so now because otherwise i cannot even understand what you are getting whether i am actually uh, saying all the things or not or whether you are getting something i do not know so i have to um, understand that one what you got so it also means that you need to collect and analyze a significant amount of data in order to substantiate your claims and you see the codings i already told you the code what units of analysis you do you expect or rather states or process as meaning practice episodes encounters roles say meaning what do they mean by pesticides do they have any kind of idea regarding bio fertilizers do they use chemical fertilizers do they have any understanding regarding bio fertilizers difference between bio fertilizers and chemical fertilizers practices what are the different practices they do that is when do they go for actually making the soil fertilize or when do they fertilize their soils how they do this one when they prepare this one so these are how do they prepare their field episodes the crop rotation what they actually do this one crop rotation that is whenever in this particular year they planted something or they sowed something so will they do the same thing in the next year also encounters what are the problems they are facing roles whenever they have to do something for the uh, community what they are doing so all these things so this is actually what your coding that is how you are seeing your research you have to code that one accordingly or relationships groups organizations lifestyles now relationship so that is how do they communicate with others 
do they have any association organizations what is their lifestyle or what is their lifestyle this thing and now say this is one structure of qualitative research a question from Laughlin and Laughlin what type it is that is what how you can proceed qualitative research what type it is what is its structure how frequent is it what are the causes what are the processes what are its consequences what are people's strategies see all the questions are open questions it is not like the quantitative questions all questions are rather the questions having some kind of general answers or answers which will actually come from the you can say come from the experiences comes from the practices of the person who did it so that's sort of why it is rather different than that of the quantitative research and say election study in britain now here you see uh, we are giving you an example this research project will record and analysis analyze the views and concerns of british citizens before and after 2010 years. now by conducting focus group study with people from various geographical areas backgrounds areas this project utilized people's perceptions of the main party leaders what do they think the most important issues civic duty and voting and reactions to the election results so 